2023 Campus Prevention Network Seal of Prevention. Presented by Vector Solutions, the CPN Seal of Prevention is awarded to institutions of higher education that have demonstrated leadership in digital prevention programming focused on student safety, well-being, and inclusion. Postal union workers from Pennsylvania will head to the nation's capital in early May for a national rally to raise awareness about the challenges faced by the U.S. Postal Service. Danielle Smith reports the workers say staff shortages, consolidations, and office closures are all affecting mail delivery. The U.S. Postal Service goal is 95 percent on-time delivery across its vast network of 167 million addresses nationwide. Kimberly Miller with the American Postal Workers Union in Pennsylvania says the worker shortage means some post offices close their facilities early and sees delays in processing the mail. Miller says rural customers often are hardest hit. Who are operating on minimal staffing. Many customers are experiencing it at the front lines. Post offices are trying to curtail hours instead of hiring adequate staffing. Um, There's always been a shortage, and now it seems to get worse and worse. In the mail, there's a real delay in getting it to your door. Miller says she isn't a fan of Postmaster General Louis DeJoy's 10-year plan to move letter sorting and distribution from local offices into large regional hubs. In 2020, DeJoy put a plan into effect known as Delivering for America to minimize employee turnover by converting more part-time staff to career status. Here's the Beaver County forecast. We'll see some patchy fog early this morning, otherwise mostly cloudy with a high near 60. Tonight, look for cloudy skies with a low of 43 and a chance of showers in the early afternoon on Friday, then mostly cloudy with a high near 65. I'm Lisa Marie with your Beaver County weather. On this Thursday, March 7th of 2024, at 35 after 11, we've got a temperature of 46 degrees with cloudy skies in Beaver County. That's a look at the news for now. I'm Curtis Walsh for 99.3 FM and AM 1230 WBVP, also streaming live around the world at beavercountyradio.com. It's time for Notes on Local Entertainment, the show highlighting the best in local talent. Hosted by Scott Tatey Entertainment, editor for the Beaver County Times, and Eddie Crow. Every every Thursday, give or take, some days Scott's on vacation, some days, you know, I'm not here, but most every Thursday, about 1135, Scott Tatey, the entertainment editor for the Beaver County Times, he he drops by. We Facebook live feed. Your hair looks good today. You still got the you you still got the the British angry pop star <laughs> look a little bit, but not disheveled. It's kind of oasis ish. It's it's less Tom Waits, more Oasis. Fair. That's a good look, and we wouldn't want anybody to miss that. So this is being live streamed on our Facebook page. I'm going to get this out of the way right now. I'm sitting at home sometime last week. I get a text or a message from you. Did you see a friend's cup? <laughs> uh -oh. I'm like, I don't know what that means. Scott, what is that? You left the coffee cup, and it's just a plastic like tumbler, right? Correct. But it's it's got the friends, the TV show, the logo over it. I'll be there for you, yes. You have gotten that back. Thank you. You, you actually snuck in while I was busy. I was going <laughs> to hold it ransom because it seemed important. Sentimental value. Talk about with your career, because there are a lot of promotional materials that show up that are available. Has there ever been anything that you could have snagged that you didn't snag, like a, a movie poster or an autograph pick guard from a musician? Because that stuff comes by your orbit, I know. Uh, yeah, I still have a B.B. King guitar pick that I'll never part with. And uh, I did an interview with Jerry Only of the Misfits, and he, he was kind of being a, a goofball and idiot. He was one of the few people that was making fun of the name Beaver County. Ah, Beaver, ah. Now, and, was he being a goofball, or was he being a jag-off, and you're trying to soften it? I would say that. Okay. But he apologized. By one day, I, in my mail, I, I opened it up, and I got some Misfits trading cards, and they are so sharp. And if I ever sell those on eBay, they'll go well. But I, I, how do you part with something like that? I, I, I think he took the effort. He probably realized afterward, hey, I was kind of a jerk to that guy, so he sent me doesn't misfits. That make you feel, doesn't that make you feel better than had he just been okay? Yes. He, he yeah. recognized it. I, he's like, all right, I, I was a jag off. I need to address big that. Big fan of his. Yeah, now, somewhere I still have. Remember that one month where Starlake was called the S&T Music Bank Park? Yes. 
when I went to the press conference, they gave us like a swag bag and the coffee mug. I still have my coffee mug. And uh, you think that would go for uh, go for anything on eBay? Or is anyone interested in the name that Starlight did not become? If there is one person that has an emotional attachment to whatever it is, you can do it. If there are two people, you you got it going on. Do you know how many coffee cups I have with <laughs> logos of radio stations that I either don't exist anymore? Or have been changed 15 times. I have a shelf full. You want any? Uh, maybe. You should have a garage sale. Garage sale? Yeah. Uh, Sounds like when we used to get baseball cards and your favorite player would get traded to another team. But it happened after the card came out. So you'd have a, you know, a goose sausage on the Chicago White Sox instead of the New York Yankees or something like so that. It didn't mean as much. You would see what you'd get out of it. All yeah. right. Well, while we're talking about selling swag for fun and profit when you went to the jason aldean restaurant how many glasses did you steal <laughs> zero zero they were nice glasses too this is on the north side oh i'm sorry the north shore, shore. <laughs> near the proposed espenlad you have any other city in america called their river shore pittsburghers would, would ridicule them mercilessly but because it's our north shore it's okay let's be honest but yeah jason aldean opened his new restaurant what's um, it called uh, creatively called Jason Rest- Jason Aldine's Kitchen and Bar. Huh? It's like a plus sign. Quick that. meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Suppose you didn't just call it Bar. What do you want to call it? Name my name. It's his money. Exactly. All right. Well, how I, was it? I'll have a video up now. You always ask about video, timesonline.com. I show you. The first thing you notice is the big tractor. There's a big, <laughs> huge uh, vintage. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. <laughs> well, it's Jason Aldine. There's a big uh, vintage John Deere tractor behind the bar. Kind of alludes to his song, Big Green Tractor. Sure. Uh, on the ceiling, there's a big sign that says, uh, My Kind of Party. Another one of his song lyrics, of course. Uh, his Pirates jersey when he headlined PNC Park in 2014, that's hanging there. So you, you get a, a, it's kind of a sports bar. It's kind of a honky tonk. And I think it'll do very well before Pirates games, before Steelers games. Some of the country shows at Stage AE, people will have a, a pregame cocktail or beer there. So I think it'll do well uh, for a while. But those things have a shelf life. It replaces Jerome Bettis's. And many of us remember when Rod Woodson had a bar. And uh, you know, these, when they're named after celebrities, there's a shelf life. Do these guys, and I'm not saying Jason Aldean doesn't understand this, but the most razor thin margin of error or margin of profit loss is a restaurant. I know, and I'm not going to get specific. There was a restaurant that was going to open and it was going to be fancy schmancy. It was going to be in the quote unquote cultural district. They spent a year and a half and several million dollars before the restaurant opened and it was closed in six months. Ouch. Do you think these guys understand? They or do? is this just advisors saying, hey, you need to do this. We got a boatload of green tractors. We need to do something with them. <laughs> I think the fact they got rich, they understand how to keep the money too. Yeah. He'll cut and run. When it, when it starts starts losing money, when people don't go there, they're, they're chasing the squirrel down the street. There's, there's a new uh, bar named after uh, you know a Pittsburgh Penguin or something. Then They'll take off, but they'll they'll make they'll make some good change, good good chunk of change for a couple of years, I'd say, and uh, I, it's worth checking out. It's definitely a southern menu. Uh, I had a couple. All right, now wait a minute. Okay, how uh-huh. southern a southern menu? Because a lot of places, and I'm going to be snotty as crap right now. Well, it's Scott. not like fried possum or anything, but it's you know. A lot you of- know what? That was racist, man. <laughs> You're from Alabama. You've told me stories about eating possum. I never have eaten a possum in my life. I've seen people eat possum. Well, Here's the problem with the possum. I love that this show can just turn. (laughs) We were were on the ball until we got marsupials involved in the discussion. Prehensile tail, little vermin. Any animal that you eat tastes like what it eats. Ooh. It does. Fair. Okay. Vegetarians, omnivore vegetarians, you know, herbivores, omnivores, all that. They taste like what they eat. If a cow, you milk a cow and the cow's been hanging out in an onion field, you'll taste, okay? Fair. Possums are the catfish of the woods. Or vultures of the ground. There's nothing they won't eat. They're, anytime, anytime a southerner has to make it into a stew, let her go. <laughs> All right, but how Southern is it? Because there's corporate Southern and then there's you it's, know, it's, Annie Lee's Southern. Yeah, it's probably corporate Southern. There's a lot of peach stuff. It, it, peach. Jason Aldean really waves the, the Georgia flag. So uh, yeah, I had a peach cocktail. There, there's a peach uh, steak kind of thing. There's just a lot of peach. But um, 
Uh, the cocktails were good. I can vouch for that. Uh, a lot of a lot of TVs. There's an outdoor patio that faces the river. It's uh, got a little bit of everything. I, I, you know, it's a huge space. I, I, they had a country band there from Ohio. It was playing pretty good. So we'll see. What is the signature sandwich? Because every place like this, they've got something. Oh, they're known for their Rod Woodson. It was the chicken breast salad. Oh, that's right. That's Grilling. right. That, that was kind of a fresh thing back then. It, it, there were 15 chickens worth of meat on top of that thing. It was outstanding. That's you remember right. You remember Bettis 36? What was the sandwich? Uh, the deep fried hoagie. I do not know that. Oh, Whoa. if you got it hot, it was phenomenal. If it got cold, it was a brick made of lard. You, you didn't want to take it home, but... The deep fried hoagie was Bettis's. They were really bragging about the uh, the grandma's recipe for meatloaf they had there, and, and, and pot roast, and they had a, a steak salad that had like like legitimate steak on it, like like uh, medium rare uh, slices of uh, you know it wasn't like steakums. It was uh, it was a filet mignon. Literally, it was a filet mignon on the salad. So, uh, but it is Pittsburgh, so they put fries on it. Of course, that was my. They, next don't, they don't have it in Nashville. You got to come to Pittsburgh to get the fries on your salad. Did they have hot chicken sandwiches? Yes. That okay. The, that is on the menu too. All right. That makes Nashville hot, right? Yes. All right. You know the story how that started? I do not. The the girlfriend was mad at the guy. He come over and he had been you know kind of stepping out. And she said, well, I'll show you. She made him a chicken sandwich and made all this hot sauce and put it on it. And he sat there and sweated like crazy and loved it and opened a hot chicken restaurant. <laughs> so not only were you stepping out on your stolen business idea. Did they stay together and become rich and famous? I don't and- believe they did. Oh. I did want to ask you, I saw this, I think, on your social media. We have somebody doing Broadway. Oh, she's not just doing it; she's starring. No, in. that's what I mean. Yes. Doing it, doing it right. No, you doing are it. right, sir. Amber Ardolino, North Sewickley Township, in Lincoln Park, grad, is starring is playing Neil Diamond's wife in the Broadway musical A Beautiful Noise. Uh, the run, the show runs through April. She started a month ago. I, I got the chance to interview her. Uh, she sent a, sent a bunch of really cool photos of her outside on the marquee. But yeah, she's getting rave reviews. She's been in a lot of other things like Moulin Rouge. Uh, she and my fair lady. Or no, I'm sorry, Funny Girl. Um, I'm trying to remember the oh, uh, ha- uh, Hamilton. When Hamilton came out, she was in the ensemble for that. But it's been a really fun story to see this Beaver County native just work her way up, and she's been working hard. I I follow her on Instagram, and, and she's always always on the hustle, always uh, promoting something. Uh, you know, showing how the dance moves she's got to learn, and uh, highly recommend people check out Amber Ardolino. Interesting thing, she's never performed in Pittsburgh. She uh. When she was still living here, she tried out a couple times for some Pittsburgh shows. They overlooked her, and now she's starring on Broadway. She said, I guess I had to go to, to New York to make my uh, theater career. Can she make a good living doing ensemble work? I know nothing about theater or theater pay. I'm sure in New York it's a union gig. But can you make a a star's living doing that, or are you just scraping by? I asked her, keeping in mind the New York rents and how much you got to pay, and mm-hmm. she said she's never had the traditional – Second job. She's never waitress. She's never uh, delivered pizzas. She's never, you know, did retail work. Anything like that. It's always been just Broadway. That, that's how she's finding a way to, to make a living. And uh, it seems like a fun one. She's always traveling all over the world too. I, I, she has a bit of a influencer thing going on too. She's on TikTok and uh, you know has like seventy three thousand followers on Instagram. So people uh, make sure they get her clothes, give her clothes to wear, and she. Make sure she gives a shout out to him, and then there's a whole um, side hustle to that. That's very well. I'm, it's a fun, fun gig she's got going on. Beaver County's own Amber Ardolino. My story is at TimesOnline.com. Scott Tady of the Beaver County Times is my guest. Okay, I saw you wrote something. I don't know if this was a public headline, but I'm going to throw you under <laughs> the bus. Pirates Network to the local bands. Drop dead. You like that? I like. It was an attention getter. It was a little homage to that. What was it? The New York Post. Uh, Gerald Ford to New York. Drop dead. I believe it was. Yeah. But uh, why? It, it's my call on this week. Uh, one of the things that's been a tradition on Pittsburgh Pirates games for years is Friday night rocks. Friday night concerts. You, yeah, wa- you watch the Pirates on Friday, and they have a band on. They've had Beaver County bands like the Hawkeyes, and Nick Ziegler in the Forty Nineteens. I know Nick's always watching. Uh, Dan Hi, Boobin. Uh, there's been just uh, four or five different Beaver County bands. Bands like the Vindies on their way up mm-hmm. got their chance to play. You, if you were watching a Pirate game, you would see them the pregame. You would see them do a song in the postgame. Yeah. During the actual game, before they cut to a commercial, they would show you, tonight we have uh, you know Dan Boobin on Friday Night Rock. Great exposure for bands 
fans. Well, now that's what Sportsnet Pittsburgh, new network, new ownership. They decided not to continue it. I'm not too happy about that. What was the justification? Haven't or given was it. there one? Well, the the, the two bands I, I talked to uh, were not giving an explanation. Just they're not interested in moving forward or some thing like that. So, yeah, it was a nice way for bands to get exposure. And I, I that and the fact they raised the, the rate twenty dollars a month to watch Pirates and Penguins. I I'm still not happy about that as as well. So I don't know. I'm not crazy about this Sportsnet Pittsburgh. Isn't it run by some Boston people? The Fenway Network, whatever they're called, or it's not even Pittsburgh based. Neither is, neither is Heinz. Well, that's true. But. It's provincial. Now, think of it like this. It's it's not who's in charge. It's the recognition of the logo, having always been here, whatever the, the logo may be. It always as felt As long local, as we, though. well. When Stan Saverin was on there, didn't it feel local? Uh, yeah. Because it was. Right. It's like what we do here. Right. There are actually people in the building do that. Now, I'm not saying that's necessarily a good thing, but there are human beings in Beaver County that program Beaver County Radio. And that's more and more rare, and that's what you're pointing out. Yeah. Speaking of Beaver County Radio, I heard you the other day on the Beaver. Mm. You played Honky Tonk Bonkadonk. Yeah. And I missed what you said after the song played. Did you have a funny line about Honky Tonk I'm sure it was something about some would refer to it as the beast with two backs. Some would refer to it. More rural. Okay. Something. It's a great song. I almost stayed in the parking lot to hear what you said. because I'm sure it was good. <laughs> I, I, I should have. I didn't. <clears throat> there are people listening. It's like, what? I, you know, we got open wheel racing over there this weekend in addition to NASCAR. We got open wheel. We're going to have the Indianapolis 500. Ooh, I know an Indiana guy like you is going to be excited about that. David Letterman. Yeah. I get all David Letterman. Did you hear the David Letterman? I gave advice to the president. Joe Biden's got to do his uh, State of the Union tonight right doesn't matter what he says it matters how he presents himself saying it mm-hmm. are you aware of the old david letterman trick the last thing he would do before he would go out and start filming taping the show do you know what he did no i mean besides harass harass the occasional intern do you know what he did i, I do not three hershey bars one after the other after the other whoa that's Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba- a sugar rush to get the sugar rush oh huh. And I said, now, see, have you ever had shows where you're like, man, I wish I'd have got caffeined up because this is brutal? Yes. Okay. Often. Want to name them? Uh, <laughs> it's, any, anything poppy, like One Direction, I saw at the stadium, uh, you know, any, any of those uh, where you're the, only per- you're the only adult there and you're trying to be fair, Justin Bieber, those kind of shows. Because Maybe. there's an energy level. The, the, the kids are screaming before the show. When they're, they're playing DJ piped in music, they're screaming their ears off and then, your ears off and then, so... That's one you definitely need a sugar rush. All right, last question before we run out of time. Good seeing you again. I'm glad you got the, the the mug back. Dave Stewart's coming to Pittsburgh. Is Annie Lennox coming with Dave Stewart, or is he just going to sing half the stuff? Or because that that strikes me as I loved that those two together. That strikes me as it could be really cool, or it could just be kind of odd. Yeah, help me out. I have a phone interview with him at twelve fifteen, which is what in uh, about uh, twenty four minutes. Uh, Dave uh-huh. Stewart of the is, is coming to Pittsburgh, opening for Brian Adams okay. at PBG Paints Arena. He's being up front. It's the songbook of the Eurythmics. You're going to hear "Sweet Dreams Are Made of This." You're going to hear uh, "Missionary Man." You're going to hear all their hits. Uh, there is, of course, a female singer on stage. Uh, you got to be nailing those Annie Lennox parts. And uh, but I guess for years they they didn't do much of those two, Annie and, and Dave. And Annie was kind of the one. There was a romantic relationship, and way then back. There, and then there wasn't, and right. then they were business people. And right. you know, it, there there was a little bit of a Stevie Nicks, Lindsey Buckingham glare across the stage at times. The story and, Dave's telling is right before the pandemic, like 2019, he did a, a show, a big show in England or something, or, and then he did the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with her, and he kind of rediscovered. Oh yeah, I liked it play these songs live. I, I like the reaction. So he decided to do the big tour. It took a few years for that to be able to happen. Bottom line, he'll be, I, I don't know if the Eurythmics ever played Pittsburgh. I, the research I've done, I have not found any set list they ever did here. So this will be the closest you'll get. I, guess. I mean, obviously it'd be great if Annie got back together with him, but uh, for now you got Dave Stewart who did, did uh, a lot of the songwriting and did, of course, the keyboards and all that crazy synth it, stuff. It's not a case where there's one dude in the band that was in the band originally for about three months before everybody else split. Right, exactly. How often does that happen? You'll see a band and you look it up and you go, no one in that band was in that band. There's like two touring Sublimes this year. One really? One Sublime with Rome has no original members, but they're doing like a farewell tour. And, and it's like, really? I, you know, and then of course, Leonard Skinner's a classic example. They're on the road again with uh, not just no original members left, no original members alive. So it's kind of a little bit sad. Weird. But- 
Yeah, it's a little bit jukeboxy, but will there be a decent turnout? Yeah, and yeah, it's got Ricky Medlock on guitar. I, I see why people go, but to me, it's just a reminder of more. So the one guy representing Leonard Skinner was the one guy that was viewed as an interloper originally with Leonard Skinner, and the brother of the the original singer who died. Yeah, yeah. Johnny Men. Here's my Ricky Medlock story. Oh, <laughs> great! Not a lot of people can whip that out, can they? <laughs> he came in. George Hamilton's tan? Yeah. George looked like an albino compared to Ricky. <laughs> Ricky was gold. Ricky was, you know, when you put a chicken on the grill and it just gets that gold and crispy? All right. Ricky was gold and crispy in 1989. Maybe they could do that at Jason Aldean's restaurant, the, the Ricky Medlock chicken sandwich. That's it. Huh? A good friend of mine wants to open a restaurant to sell not turkey, just turkey skin. Why not? We'll call it the Ricky Medlock. There's a moneymaker here. I, I bet we get a bonus of a green tractor. <laughs> it's good seeing you, man. You too, Eddie. Uh, Scott Tatey of the Beaver County Times on the Teleforum. The Beaver County Conservation District is celebrating spring with two of their most popular